Have you ever taken off your iPro for just a second and in that second splashed nitromethane and acetone in your eye? Me neither. I've never done that, but I wanted to check to see if you had. Welcome to the garage, the sad, oxidized, lonely, cold garage of the explosive experimental chemist. This is the third installment of uh, Duke Nashley's Energetic Series. We're running with Energetic America is the title. Go USA! I'm out here working on some experimental nitramines, some uh, cousins of Keto RDX. I started to do a Keto RDX video last week, and then I realized it really doesn't make sense without covering RDX first. And if you're covering RDX, then you gotta cover things like HDN. It ended, it ended up snowballing, and now I we're, we're gonna procrastinate on that. <clears throat> I've been thinking a lot about primary explosives. Mostly, I think about how they're always a trade-off. There's not a lot of great options that perform really well and are easy to uh, produce. And so there's just not a whole lot of options when it comes to primary explosives. And that makes me sad. That is right. You guessed it. We are talking about silver acetylide, silver nitrate double salt. Also known as SADS. Also known as uh, Sassin. Just kidding. It's not known as Sassin. You've probably never heard of that. I haven't heard it either. But I saw that when I was researching the topic for this video. So SADS is very popular in amateur energetics. It's not really considered a reliable primary uh, in industry, but you can certainly use it. And I would argue that SADS is quite usable, but it has some explosive character that's kind of tricky. And you really need to be firing it at high density. If you fire it at low density, it's a little bit anemic, which is what SADS is known for. Nevertheless, it's extremely popular because it's so simple to make. Only a couple of reagents, and the procedure itself is really straightforward. It has become quickly become the go-to primary explosive aside from something like uh, peroxides. Peroxides uh, have lots of issues. We can talk about that later. I do not recommend peroxides at all, so I don't, I don't recommend TAP-P. I don't recommend HMTD, any of that stuff. Acetylides are a totally different story. They are usable. They are stable. Acetylene gas being explosive has been known about for a really long time. They knew about the heavy metal acetylide salts being explosive as early as the 1860s at like the tail end of the Civil War. Uh, Berthelot is one of the first guys to really do work on that and he did a lot of stuff with the, with the uh, copper variant of the acetylide. Copper is pretty tricky. I don't think it's worth covering right now. Maybe we can cover it later. I wish it was better because I really want to use copper acetylide, but SADS is really what you'd go for, the silver variant. I would describe it as, you know, in terms of acetylide, silver is like the faithful wife that is uh, always there and does her job. Cuprous acetylide is kind of like the mistress that you really wouldn't want to take around your kids, but she's all right. And then uh, you have her drunk cousin that's like, you know, have, thinks it's a funny joke to like blow homeless guys. And so that's, the, the cupric is totally unreliable and dangerous and unpredictable. Its decomposition temp is like all the way down to 50 C, so it's basically unusable. It is a uh, contaminant product in certain procedures to produce uh, copper acetylides. So we're not gonna be covering copper at all, we're just gonna do silver. This is a primary explosive that should, uh, it should be known about more. There's a lot of videos on it, but we're just going to cover it. Maybe a new way of synthesizing it. All right, so let's cover some stats on SADS. It, it, now, we're talking about the double salt. We're not talking about straight silver acetylide. Straight silver acetylide is more sensitive in terms of impact and friction. It's also a little bit lower powered. So 1.9 KMS, somewhere in there for straight silver acetylide. But the double salt... At low density, you're going to get 2.2 KMS, and at high density, you'll double that to 4.4. And we're talking the difference here in density. We're talking 5.3 grams per cubic centimeter would be a high density press. And then low density would be somewhere around 2.5 grams per cubic centimeter. That's what you'll typically find among users. They're not going to pack it uh, super crazy. I don't even know, honestly, if, uh, if SADS dead presses. I'm not even sure. Anyways... It's hard to dead press, so have at it. Another thing to note is that the straight salt of silver acetylide decomposes at a lower temp, so 143 
average. Whereas you go up to 200C for silver citalon. 200C is a great neighborhood for decomposition temperature. Sensitivity of SADS is pretty good in my book. Uh, it's definitely less sensitive than something like mercury fulminate. It's way less sensitive than peroxides. I would say that in, with, the, with the double salt, uh, I think it's probably a little less sensitive than lead azide. The crystal itself of SADS is a little bit uh, sensitive to handling, like if it breaks, you can initiate an accidental detonation. So I usually like to use like Teflon powder or something like that to desensitize it if I'm doing straight SADS. A really easy one is to mix it with nitrocellulose, um, with, a, with a lacquer nitrocellulose. So we'll do that at the end, we'll talk about that. Lead block expansion on SADS is 136 cubic centimeters, and that's actually not very high for a lead block test. A lot of your secondaries will be in the, like a high performance secondary will be in the 300, uh, high 300 to 400 cubic centimeter range. 136 is low, but what you have to remember is that we're talking about a primary explosive. So this lead block expansion is doing work. You're, you're pushing force on metal. And this is not really the job of a primary. The job of a primary is only to initiate the detonation train. So it's very specific in purpose and it's not a lead block test. So keep that in mind. Heat of explosion, if you care to know that, is gonna be 183 kcal per mole versus the straight salt is, uh, silver acetylide is 70 kcal per mole. Something you should understand about SADS is that it is light sensitive. So you can absolutely detonate it with a laser. It's a laser initiated uh, primary explosive. However, there is not a lot of work done on SADS. So a lot of the stuff, a lot of its character is unknown. You can potentially set off SADS with like a really powerful uh, camera flash because I really don't know what the range of wavelengths is that SADS is sensitive to in detonation. That's the reason you don't want to go to like a discotheque or something with a, a pocket full of SADS. It's just really not going to work well. It's just a recipe for disaster. Critical diameter is very low. It's extremely low. It's uh, single crystal detonations. Minimum mass that you want to use for loading to initiate most uh, secondaries, common secondaries, ETN and PETN is what is usually initiated by SADS typically. I like to go 50 plus and all the way up to, I mean, in some cases I'll go up to half a gram for SADS, depending on how much you synthesize. But the minimum is 40 milligrams. SADS is desensitized when it's wet. So don't be uh, confused or misled. When this is in the wet state, it's not gonna be very powerful. But as soon as it's dry, it's a totally different story. I mean, it's an extremely fast and short transition DDT transition into a detonation. Okay, so this is actually an addendum. I've already finished filming the video, but I wanted to go back and add this because it's very important. When you're uh, producing primary explosives, my rule, my personal rule of thumb is that I don't go beyond five grams unless I have some kind of remote setup or something that's gonna protect me from detonation. There is, believe it or not, a literature procedure to producing SADS. So that would be from Stadler, I'll put the equation up on the screen here. So this would be, uh, his procedure is to run acetylene gas into 50, a 50 gram solution of silver nitrate along with 200 cubic centimeters of um, water and 30 cubic centimeters of nitric acid at a density of 1.4. And then he heats this to 80 to 90 C. This is, this is the literature procedure for the production of the co-salt. I do something a little different. I picked this up from one of the forums for amateur energetics. Um, I pump acetylene gas from calcium carbide. If you're not familiar with that, calcium carbide is like the old uh, minor headlamp fuel. It's the little rocks that you drop in there. And uh, as soon as they touch water, they're gonna produce acetylene gas immediately. So you just get a vessel, you rig up something with a tube, you run it into acetone. That's what I use. So, so we're using an acetone trap. We're using a vessel filled up with acetone. We're gonna bubble acetylene into it, and then it's going to become saturated. Uh, acetylene is highly soluble in acetone. So it's going to really hold on to the acetylene very well and act as a carrier to then transfer it into a silver nitrate and nitric acid solution. 
Typically what I do, uh, so silver is not as cheap as it used to be, but it's still, you know, a, an ounce of silver goes a long way in the preparation of sads. So I usually dissolve the silver in uh, nitric acid, and then over time it's actually going to revert back to silver slowly. You can just add more nitric acid until it turns white, and then uh, I just keep a beaker around with silver nitrate that I do this to all the time. And you slush it around, you're gonna get a fluid. I dump this into a container, uh, into, the, into the reaction vessel, and then I'm gonna take my acetone solution and I'm gonna drop it in. And, t and you're going to see reaction, you're gonna see some fizzing. I just keep adding acetone solution until there appears visually to be no more precipitate of SADS. That is my procedure. It is down and dirty, it is easy. It produces extremely clean white SADS that I really prefer versus um, just running acetylene gas straight into the silver nitrate solution. I don't like doing that. I think the acetone method is great. Washing the product, you can wash with additional acetone, cold acetone, whatever you wanna do um, to remove residual surface nitric acid. One thing you don't wanna wash with is isopropyl, is particularly because silver nitrate is one of the only accessible ways to actually produce isopropyl nitrate, which is a totally different explosive. Also, isopropyl reacts with nitric acid to release NO2. So if you if you act, if you forget about this and if you use isopropyl, like I love isopropanol because it's so cheap. You get it at the dollar store, it's super cheap. Uh, but particularly with silver nitrate things, you don't want to use it. That reaction between the nitric acid and the isopropyl is actually going to oxidize the isopropanol into acetone. <laughs> and then you're gonna get a release of NO2 red gas in the air. And it's kind of scary, it gets, uh, I've tried it before. It get, makes like a poppy sound. Maybe we'll do it for the video so you can just see what it looks like. It makes a poppy sound. It basically looks like the SADS is gonna detonate right in front of you, and it might. So don't use isopropanol. You wanna use something like acetone, it's fine. And then you just dry it out. It's just gonna dry on its own and then it's ready to use. Keep in mind, as soon as it's dry, it is now uh, ready to go, ready to detonate, and it has all of the characteristics of a primary explosive. It has some mechanical uh, sensitivity to detonation. It detonates in single crystals, so you want to give this the due diligence and respect that a primary explosive deserves. Last thing I'll mention is that SADS reverts to silver on exposure to UV and just over time to general atmospheric conditions, it's going to revert to types of silver. So you can, uh, it it's actually remains effective. It's, uh, I've done long-term tests on SADS. It remains effective. It will uh, go through some reversion though. So the way that I stop, this is the reason that I like to use a carrier to use the SADS because it, it keeps any reversion on the surface and then you can make uh, pellets. I like to make pellets out of nitrocellulose. So what I do is use a uh, like a typical handgun or rifle powder. So that would either be like a double or a triple base powder. And in there you have some nitroglycerin and nitroglycerin. Anyways, I dissolve that in acetone to make nitrocellulose lacquer. And then I mix it in weight, 15% to sats. And this makes a, a, a nice moldable plastic pellet then you can shape, you can put it into sections of straw and then use those pellets and drop them into loads. They work great. I actually do have a uh, long-term sample. So it's an extremely small uh, sample that is uh, stored only for testing. Um, it's a year old. And so we can test that. It's gonna be a 15% nitrocellulose pellet and we'll see how it performs after one year of storage. I'm sure it's gonna do great but we'll do that on camera so that you can see it. So here's that footage. And as you can see, that completely undergoes uh, BTFU, uh, no problem with the stats. So it is a totally viable primary explosive and uh, it, it is definitely capable of doing some work. That's my preferred way to make sense. So I hope you enjoyed this information. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more stuff. I'm working on some other stuff. We're gonna uh, really get deep in the weeds here.